what do you would you identify as the one thing your ministry needs the most right now? If you could identify one. Yeah, we were thinking about that. I think uh, St. Andrews is supporting both us and our son and his uh, son, Stephen, and his family. And um, he has a unique uh, program that he is just starting, which is uh, a PhD program uh, in Asia, uh, there in the Philippines, for people around Asia, um, for people who are becoming leading scholars in their countries around Asia. And in order to do that, it's just starting up, but uh, we're thinking of, they need help with uh, building their library. They need help, you know, financially uh, mm -hmm. buying books and uh, a library set up with scholarships, with things like that. And uh, that could be something that could really be uh, help in this groundbreaking, groundbreaking uh, program. Mm -hmm. that's uh, available, it's developing right now. Yeah, I think- That would be wonderful. Yeah, the, one of the, the dreams or ideas is to create a, a center for theology where people can come and you know access resources and just learn and, and grow. And so that's a project that's just getting started. Most Christians in Asia, I mean, the vast majority are first generation Christians. And uh, they are getting training, but there, there needs to be more in-depth training. First time they've read through the Bible, first time they've done a lot of things. So the more theological training that can go to their own countries, uh, even where missionaries cannot go, uh, they're developing and multiplying leaders mm -hmm. in their context. We have a lot of books that we throw away that would be useful. Yeah, sure. Those and then uh, certainly also uh, really good uh, newer theological works also that uh, they really need. So most students, the only library they have is uh, Kindle books. And few of them have the, the more expensive resources uh, that we have for, uh, say, a, a dictionary for Greek English or Hebrew or uh, a lot of different uh, tools that you would use uh, for more in-depth study. Yeah. My dad taught at Next in Nairobi. And he'd tell you when he'd go back from home leave, he'd carry hundreds of pounds of books. Oh, yes. Just... And we used to send uh, big boxes, uh, but more and more there are online libraries that you can connect to. You can pay a fee. Uh, a lot of our textbooks, if possible, are Kindle books. Mm -hmm. uh, but you always need those those uh, those older works or, or more comprehensive type of books that are. Mm -hmm. You can't uh, you can't put them on you can't read them on Kindle and you can't uh, uh, yeah. look at them without a better uh, without the book themselves. Well, I'm curious. We don't have time to talk about this, I guess, in this video, but we'll have to get together later. Uh, just how a book goes to the a theological book goes about becoming a Kindle book. How does that happen? I don't know. Well, I think. It's up to the publisher. Um, uh, there are uh, uh, foundations and different organizations that help with some of that. Uh, many of the book publishers do publish those in uh, Kindle format. For new books, yeah. New books, yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean older books? Yeah, I was thinking. Uh, yeah, some of them are also online, but many of them, you know, they're just uh, they're old PDF type things have been uh, photocopied and, uh, you know, uh, so you have to do a lot of reading just off your computer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it makes it more difficult. Oh, that's interesting. There, there are things now also where you can 
you buy a some type of machine that will print off if you just need to make one copy or 10 copies that you can print it and and uh, bind it right there yeah just in time printing and binding yeah, yeah. 